Rolls Royce and Boy, hot fire. That is important. Mainstream. It's the real. Y'all yeah, one of the biggest things in American culture. Yeah. They not like us. Think everybody should go on the Breakfast Club. Yes. You wanna shake it up? They not like us. Wake the f*** up, Breakfast Club. DJ Envy. The family guy. Jess Hilarious. I'm the wild card. Keep the f*** real. And Charlemagne the guy. I'm a lovable app. Or your clown. <laughs> Yo, I'm loving that energy up there right now. Sometimes you gotta pop out and show to them. Now let's begin. Good morning, USA. Yo, 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 yo. Jess is still on maternity leave. Lauren LaRosa is filling in. What up, Lauren? Good morning. Charlamagne's running a little late. It is Tuesday. Charla always running late. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this morning it was the George Washington Bridge. And, I, and uh, on the way in to work every morning, I listen to the news. And the reason I listen to the news is not only so I can figure out what's going on in the world, uh, whether it's uh, political, whether it's celebrity, but also to know which way I can drive in. And this morning it said the George Washington Bridge is a 45-minute delay. So I didn't take the George Washington Bridge. I take the same way every day. I've only hit traffic one time in my whole existence and, here. Until that one time when that bridge is closed or that tunnel's closed and you stuck. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be. So I took another way, which got me here on time, and Charlemagne is still on the bridge. So good morning, Charlemagne. Oh, he didn't listen to the... He didn't listen Why to the Why you didn't news. text him? I didn't think about it. I'll be zoning in on my way to work. Envy, that is so selfish. I usually do. I usually text him, you know, the bridge is shut down or the bridge is... But I just followed navigation. Navigation took me a different route. Well, I should have, though. At least one of y'all are here. That's right. Because that one day when I thought it was about to just start with me, I'm like, I can't do all the yo yo yo's good, but like, I'm like, y'all, I need, I need help. You good? Here. You good? You got a lot to discuss today. Man, yeah. Woo. First rumors, you got to fill us on what's going on with Diddy. Diddy was arrested yesterday. Yeah, Diddy was taken into custody custody yesterday um, by federal by the feds, and I, man, when I got the alert, my my exact words were. Oh man, it's over. And like, this is this is not state. This is federal. Yeah, this is federal. And and I, I was just saying to you um, before, like you can do certain things on a state level, but mm -hmm. when it goes federal, them boy, they they not playing around. They really trying to make sure people understand not to play with them. Yeah, and they say that their conviction rate is uh, eighty five or ninety percent or something like that. The feds do not, and I've been saying this since all this happened. The feds are not organizing the way they did around this situation in multiple different states, multiple different agencies, unless they really think they got something and they know who you and, and, and you in New York. You right. know who Diddy is. You know who Sean Combs is. You're not going to risk a high profile mess up, right? I don't know. So, right. I mean, yeah, we'll be keeping you guys updated. We'll break that down in just with the mess. And also, Eve will be joining us. Eve uh, has a new book, her memoir called Who's That Girl? So we're going to be kicking in with Eve in a little bit. And we're going to get on the Eve mini mix. So you can hit me up and let me know your favorite Eve, jo yeah, your favorite Eve joints. And we'll get on for you. But let's get the show cracking. Front page news. Morgan will be joining us. She'll break down everything political. And Philadelphia Eagles, I'm sorry for y'all. Y'all had that game. Like, y'all were right there. How much did they lose by? One point. Oh, wow. Dang. We'll break it down next. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Laura LaRosa's filling in for Jess. And let's get in some front page news. Now, last night, like I said, the Eagles lost to the Falcons 22-21. The Eagles had the game, but they lost it in the last, two what, two minutes? Less than two minutes. So, mm. uh, yeah, congratulations to the Falcons. Now, good morning, Morgan. Good morning, good morning. So it's, I was going to say, where's Charlamagne? He's not there? Okay, so. Give me a second. I know, look, I know he's overhearing from President Biden, but hey, he's still our commander in chief. And if he speaks, I'm going to report on it, okay? So okay. with that said, President Biden says there's no place for political violence in America after there was an alleged uh, attempt or another alleged attempt, rather, on former President Trump's life. Now, speaking at the National HBCU Week Conference in Philadelphia, Biden said America has suffered too many times from violence against political leaders, and it does nothing but creates more problems. Let's hear those comments from President Biden. Let me just say there is no, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, those of you who know me, many of you do. No place in political violence for political violence in America. None. Zero. Never. I've always condemned political violence. I always will in America. In America, we resolve our difference peacefully at the ballot box, not at the end of a gun. America suffered too many times the tragedy of an assassin's bullet. It solves nothing and just tears the country apart. We must do everything we can to prevent it and never give it any oxygen. 
So meanwhile, we are learning more about the alleged suspect in the attempted assassination and the details surrounding the event. Speaking from Palm Beach County, Florida, where the event occurred, or excuse me, the incident occurred, mm -hmm. Acting Service Director Ronald Rowe said the suspect, Ryan Ruth, did not get off any shots and he praised uh, former president's, uh, the former president's detail for their swift actions. Let's hear those comments from Acting C Secret Service Director Ronald Rowe. Yesterday was an off-the-record movement off the record and the president wasn't even really supposed to go there it was not on his official schedule and so we put together a security plan and that security plan worked we need to get out of a reactive model and get to a readiness model there could be another geopolitical event that could put the united states into a kinetic conflict or some other uh some other issue that may result in additional responsibilities and protectees of the united states secret service and I just want to say that the commitment of Congress to the Secret Service throughout the years has been tremendous. And we will continue to work with them and Secretary Mayorkas. Yeah, he and, uh, was, that wasn't on the schedule, but everybody said that that's what he usually does. They said when he's off Sunday, he goes to his golf course and he, he plays golf in the morning and he has lunch in the afternoon. They said that is his schedule, even though it's not on his official schedule. So people did know right. that. Right, and Mayorkas, by the way, is the uh, Secretary of Homeland Security, for those who do not know. So 58-year-old Ryan Res Wesley Ruth, uh, he does face two federal charges, one count of possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and one count of a pos of possession of a firearm with an obliterated serial tag. Now, whether or not those charges will stick uh, remains to be determined. Um, former FBI uh, special agent and current Palm Beach County uh, defense attorney Stuart Kaplan he says it's possible uh, the suspect may not be charged with federal crimes because he never got off any shots and he was never actually seen pointing the gun at former President Trump so uh, I will continue to keep you updated on those those That's two crazy. charges do Right. I know. Right. Um, those two charges do carry a combined maximum penalty of 20 years in prison and a uh, possible fine of five hundred thousand dollars. So, again, I'll keep you posted on that. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Trump, he's he's jumping in on all of this responding. He's blaming the rhetoric of President Biden and Vice President Harris for the apparent uh, second assassination attempt on him. Uh, Trump talked about the incident a day after the man was taken into custody after authorities said he attempted to target Trump while playing golf. Uh, he said Ruth is believed, Ruth believed the rhetoric of Biden and Harris and he acted on it. Now Trump noted previous comments from Biden and Harris that described Trump to be a threat to democracy and he called on Democrats to watch what they say leading up to November's election. Uh, quoting, they use highly inflammatory language i can use it too far better than they can but i don't far yeah. better much better better than anybody you've ever seen but, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh, vice president kamala harris she actually uh stepped in and uh spoke uh, through the white house saying that she is deeply disturbed uh by the possible um assassination attempt of former president trump and that she condemns political violence so we will continue to watch this situation for you, and uh, yeah, I'll let you know what's going on as details arise. Yeah, that rhetoric is the rhetoric that he actually spits. That All that is done because of the things that he said. But let me ask you a question. Uh, what is the National HBCU Conference? I've, I've never heard of that, and, and what happens at that conference? I'm just curious. So, uh, the National HBCU HBCU Week Conference. Um, I was going to say it's where, you know, the, the, the leaders, they gather in and um, whether it be HBCU leaders, uh, presidents from uh, various universities, they uh, come in and converge and they also meet with uh, the administration on how to, you know, all the the seven billion dollars that they got. Yep. Yeah. They yeah. Figure out where all of that stuff kind of gotcha. goes and more. Okay. So I, I believe they had some of that um, last year. I went. I attended um, an event at the White House for that last year, and I also sat on a call yesterday. I have to go through that call, but yeah, um, I believe those efforts will continue, and I will continue to talk to you guys about that as well. All right, thank you, Morgan. We'll see you next hour. Sure. Everybody else, get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open. Again, 800-585-1051. Get it off your chest. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. I'm dialing. I'm dialing. Hey, what you doing, man? I'm dialing. I'm calling call, call you. This is your time to get it off your chest. Whether you're mad or blessed. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Jasmine from New Brunswick. Hey, Jasmine from Jersey. Get it off your chest, mama. Just wanted to uh, shout out to all the moms that's working and wanted to say pretty much continue to live in your power. 
you know, take those steps to make those changes and just pray. And salute to all the moms out there. I know y'all stressed out. School started back. I know it's a lot, man. Y'all, the vacation just ended. Well, I should say the summer just ended. And getting them kids back to school is a lot. Mm-hmm. Back on schedule. Hey, especially going back to work. <laughs> and back to work. All right. Have a good one, Jazz. You too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello. Who's this? Yes, sir. J.A. from Indy. J.A. from Indy. What's up? Get it off your chest, J.A. <sighs> I gave some bad parenting advice, man, so I just want to apologize to my boy on air. Uh, oh. His daughter had a boy in a room. He called me. He said he was pissed. I pulled up on him, said I talked to my niece. Turns out the boy doesn't identify as a boy, so I agree with my niece, even though I really didn't. Come downstairs, tell his wife, see, y'all overreacted. He doesn't identify as a boy. They told me stay out the house. So I want to apologize because I gave him some bad advice on her, just for the laugh. How, how old was the young lady? How, how long was uh, uh, your niece? How old is she? Uh, my, she's 12. Okay. So what was the bad advice? Well, I knew what he was saying. No boys in the room, right? It's a little girl. But I also knew that the boy said he identified as a non-binary. So technically, they both were right. And I knew he was pissed, so I came downstairs and said, you overreacting. The boy don't even identify as a boy. So she's right. So he put me out. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a tough one. I, I, I said at that point, you got to see nobody's in the room. Everybody in the living room. Mm-hmm. Boy or girl. Everybody agree, in the living room. It was funny to me. Mm. I, I could see he was upset. And he's always calling me just like talk to his daughter. But man, you should have seen his face. So I just want to apologize on there without saying your name. I was wrong. It was for my own humor. But you were right. No boys in the room. All right. Have a good one, brother. It's a brother. Sometimes you got to mind your business. I was about to say, I'm minding my business so hard over here right now. I don't even know. Like, how do you respond? You don't even. It's like you. Um, Nobody in the room. Door open. Everybody stay downstairs. We all here together. True. Hello. You who's this? Good morning. Good morning. This is Pepsi Joe. What's up, Pepsi Joe? Get it off hey, your chest. Is hey, Charlemagne the God in yet? He running a little late. He'll be in a second. I mailed this man a watch. I don't know how he's still late. He mailed me a black of fat tie. Shout out to Charlemagne and Anita, Anita Colpack's book. Shout out to Anita Colpack. We did it. Oh, okay. Have a good one. But yeah, I, he's not here yet. Yeah. What, kind of, what type of watch did you mail him? Was it a Rolex? Uh, no, nah, I picked it up on a cruise ship. But, you know, I, I caught Pry, you know, shout out to Royal Caribbean, you know. Everybody just take a cruise. But, uh, yeah, he should be on time, bro. He's really, really showing his colors by man. doing this, man. All right, man. Have a good one. <laughs> 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 Get it off your chest. 800-585-1051. If you need to vent, hit us up now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. It's a new day. This is your time to get it off your chest. Wake up. Wake up. Whether you're mad or blessed. It's time to get up and get something. Call up now. 800-585-1051. We want to hear from you on The Breakfast Club. Hello, who's this? Man, this is the proof from Omaha, Nebraska. What up, brother? What's up? What's up, brother? Get it off your chest. Man, I'm trying to get off my chest. So I'm a businessman. I run an electrical business called uh, Black Power Redevelopers. I hired an assistant to help me with estimating invoicing and whatever else I need help with. But the community giving me an issue because my assistant rides with me every day in the truck and she's a female. So my question is, you have an assistant, DJ Envy. Is it okay for your assistant to like book flights with you? Go to business, uh, you know, business event. We're planning to go to the mental health awareness for Charlemagne, and uh, my uh, female friends are giving me an issue about it. You know, they say I'm getting too close to my assistant, so I'm my, trying to get your thoughts. My assistant does everything for me and with me. I mean, she she watches the kids oh sometimes God. for me. She books my flight. She books my hotel rooms. She'll drive me places. Uh, she is my my right hand and my left hand when it comes to to the to the world out there. Without my assistant Mercedes, things would be tough. So my wife doesn't have a problem with uh, my assistant Mercedes. She actually was the one that told me to hire her, and it was probably one of the greatest business decisions that I've ever made. So as far as having a, a female assistant, as long as you know it's business and y'all both cool with the business, I don't have a problem with it. Matter of fact, Who's I'm about the, to call my assistant right now and wake her ass up and tell her to get her ass to the man, gym. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, I'm what, moving like a straight boss. What about you, Olga Charlotte? He's not in here yet, but this is Lauren. Hey, good morning. Oh, I had I'm a kidding. question though, like, but oh, where okay. does where does the um where does the reserve like the hesitation from your female friends come from? Like, is there like what's the issue? I think I think so. Uh, more so, the issue they say we're like just super close on social media. You know, what I mean, we just trying to get it out there, and they're not comfortable with seeing a man and a female actually work and grind and take care of business. She bought me tickets to the uh, Husker game a couple weeks ago when they played Colorado for my birthday, and everybody's just like, "You can't be doing those type of things with her." And she's your assistant. If she's a business assistant, like I'm like, dang, you know, it was just a gift. Nah, I mean, I I don't understand. As as long as there's no you know 
quote unquote relationship. Yeah. Romantic relationship. Definitely I don't I don't not. have a problem. Even this weekend I was in Vegas and my sister got me tickets to the fight. Like that's you know, she she does and, what she's and I'm a to single do. man, so I guess they make it I guess it's even worse, um, from what I was understanding is me being single and she is she being my sister and other girls liking me is kinda like some jealousy. I just wanted to make sure that I nah. wasn't As long I mean, as there's no romance involved, I wouldn't care. I, I mean, who cares what other people think? You, you care about your business yeah, and making sure that your, your life is less stressful. Yeah. And that's all you got to worry about. Everybody else can really uh, eat a D. Definitely make your life D. less stressful. We're getting to the money. Uh, black Power like Redevelopers, man. Make sure y'all go follow it on IG and check us out for real. Those female problem. friends, they need to understand. If that's making his business flow better, that, they should want that. Yeah, like I'm saying, I'm always I with my sister. My sister with me everywhere. No and then not only that, my sister got a boyfriend, so her boyfriend be there too. Like, we don't pay that no mind. Hello, who's this? Yo, Big Chocolate, the toe sucker. What's up, everybody? God bless everybody. Lauren, welcome. So, yo, two quick things, right? Shout out Club Vista, MohegaSun.com. And we got P. Diddy, but I'm going to call him P. Dummy, right? So, P. Diddy, every breath you take, every move you make, you're dumber than R. Kelly. Remix that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just I just couldn't take it. It just I know you was you was prepped. It was it was it was horrible. I just you know, anyway, get it off your chest. Eight hundred five eight five one zero five one. If you need to vent, you can hit us up. Now we have Jess with the mess with Lon Larosa. We do. Um, we are we're we're going into Diddy and trying to figure out like dun 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 what's about to happen next and and you know what people are talking about right now. All right, we'll get into that next. So don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. What up, Charlemagne? Peace to the planet. What's happening? How y'all feeling out there, man? All right. Well, let's get to Jess with the Mess with Lauren LaRosa. The news is real, but it's hilarious. Jessica Robin Moore. Jess don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide Mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach issue. With Lauren. Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got Talk, talk to me. Okay, guys. Um, so last night, um, September 16th, uh, Diddy was taken into custody in New York. Um, he was taken into federal custody in New York. Now, reports state that he was taken into custody inside of his hotel lobby. Um, that I have not confirmed, like the actual location of where he was taken into custody, but mm -hmm. I have confirmed that he was taken into custody. Um, now, I reached out uh, to... Diddy's team, but I also reached out to um, the feds. So the Southern District of New York is who is handling this case and this indictment. Um, in the statement that they issued, they said earlier this evening, federal agents arrested Sean Combs based on a sealed indictment filed by the Southern District of New York. We expect to move to unseal the indictment in the morning, this morning, and we'll have more to say at that time. Mm. Now, in addition, so this statement um, kind of painted a, a little bit of a picture. Like, it, number one, it confirmed that he had been arrested. Not because you can say taken into custody, and the normal person will have a question. Like, does that mean he was arrested? Mm -hmm. Is he just been taken in because they have some questions? Like, mm -hmm. what's happening? So the fact that they confirmed he was arrested means that they are going to move forward with something. He probably um, turned himself in. That's why. That why you didn't see no pictures of him doing that. Uh that no, they, well, they say they didn't. Yeah, they didn't? so mm -mm. I was. I'm, 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 I'm mm. on my way to that. So they use the term arrested, which is that elevates it all the way. And then um, there were there were reports that came out that Diddy had been in New York for this past week because he was supposed to arrange to turn himself in. Mm -hmm. um, that, according to reports, was supposed to happen happen Tuesday. So that was supposed to actually happen today. Um, but there are reports that something happened. Uh, law enforcement actually told TMZ that something happened that made them expedite and come a day sooner um, so I don't know what that something was I've been asking that question for a very long time but I was told that basically um, there'll be more information this morning once everything was unsealed mm -hmm. um, I did reach out to Diddy's team and his attorney sent me a statement he said we are disappointed with the decision to pursue what we believe is an unjust prosecution of Mr. Combs by the U.S. Attorney's Office Sean Diddy Combs is a music icon self-made entrepreneur loving family man and proven philanthropist who has spent the last 30 years building an empire, adoring his children and working to uplift the black community. He is an imperfect person, but he is not a criminal. To his credit, Mr. Combs has been nothing but cooperative with this investigation and he voluntarily relocated to New York last week in anticipation of these charges. Please reserve your judgment until you have all the facts. These are the facts of an innocent man with nothing to hide. I'm sorry, these are the acts of an innocent man with nothing to hide and he looks forward to clearing his name in court. 
Now, this statement told me a lot. First of all, the fact that they started with we are disappointed. That said to me that there was some sort of conversation over these last weeks, two weeks, however long between change, yep. Diddy's uh, legal team in the prosecutor's office and whatever that arrangement was right because if you think back to like even Harvey Weinstein Harvey Weinstein turned himself in and we had known in the news what day he was turning himself in mm -hmm. so this statement from Diddy's attorney leads me to believe that whatever that agreement was it wasn't honored but again there are reports that Diddy was supposed to be allowed to turn himself in on a Tuesday but the feds moved in early yeah if you got arrested in a hotel lobby I feel like there'd be pictures and video and yeah I mean I haven't confirmed the hotel lobby thing but there oh, are okay. no mm -hmm. photos there are no videos but those reports are out there but to back up those reports there is a confirmed source Source, police source that told TMZ that they did actually move in early. Mm -hmm. um, now, another thing that was telling in this statement to me was the fact that they're, they're painting this like character picture of him. It's like Diddy, who is the loving father, the, you know, this man mm -hmm. in the black community, all that stuff. And if you think about the last week or two, we've seen Diddy out in New York. We didn't know why he was here, but we've seen him out in New York. What do, what do we see him doing? He's smiling. He's taking photos with fans. He's throwing up the L for love. I know, uh, I think it was yesterday or the day before he was out at Melba's with the whole family. They're standing outside doing family photos. So to me, if, if I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know, if you're someone who knows that this is coming, Coming, this all goes to you when you want to keep up the character you want people to see you in this light and his attorney is doubling down on that um but i think them asking for people to reserve judgment is because of course you know diddy's taken into custody by the feds after everything that has happened you instantly jump to assume oh he did it He's well people uh, well let's be clear people cast judgment after people saw that video a hundred percent like come on yeah a hundred percent you can't you, tell people to reserve judgment after they didn't see a video like that for they're sure. going to judge well i seen something they said they have over 10 uh 10 witnesses and they're going to be uh unsealing this thing this morning so yes we saw a video also too but what yeah in, in, the, in the indictment that they're unsealing what are they saying is in it I, was, I read something in the New York Times yesterday I mean. so there um, I don't have specific details yet because it's not unsealed but what it's going to uncover is more information in relation to sex trafficking and oh. what was it sex trafficking and what's the second uh, one racketeering racketeering, racketeering yeah. now I like anytime you hear Rico whether it's a drug case it's, it's something related to trafficking or whatever it's normally the, you know law enforcement is trying to say that there's a big community Community or conglomerate of organized crime of some sort. So when you say racketeering, that is the R and Rico. Yes, mm -hmm. basically what the, what that is yelling is that they are trying to put Diddy in this position of all of this illegal criminal activity. He has been the driving force and the commander and director of it. Um, is what I think that we're going to hear. But what's going to be really telling once this information is unsealed, and uh, you know, I'm hoping I can get this before we're done the show. If not, we'll have it up on Brown Girl Grinding, and then we'll bring it back here um the following morning. But the evidence where we should soon get a look into mm -hmm. what they found when they ran into these houses, the people that they've been talking to, you know, it's been reports that Cassie has been cooperating um, mm -hmm. with the federal case. And all of this is over a matter of seven or eight months. Right. The, the first accusation from Cassie was November 16th. We're now in September. Since then, um, he stepped away from Revolt as chairman. When did they, when did they do the raids of the, of the houses? What the raids of the houses. So in the, on March 26th, they ran March. into the Miami home. And on mm -hmm. March 28th, they ran into the L.A. home. In April, the reports came out that Cassie was working with this federal case, whatever this case may be. Um, in May, there was, I'm sorry, May 19th, that he came out and apologized. May 29th. Uh, there were reports of the federal grand jury being convened, which means mm -hmm. they got these people together to look at whatever it is that they thought they found to see if they had enough to bring charges. Um, August, there was another accuser who came out, the girl that was talking about that uh, he allegedly did whatever to her when she flew out to his all-white party. Mm -hmm. um, and then September, Dawn Richards, the $100 million lawsuit. And I don't know who of these people or what is actually being considered. But that's a lot in these last couple months. So, we, you know, we'll stay locked to kind of see what's coming up. Yeah, yes. racketeering and sex trafficking. If he gets racketeering and sex trafficking for uh, free coughs, it will be others involved. Yes. Like, if you ever ran a train with Diddy, you're probably going to jail. Yeah, that's what a lot of people were saying that, you know, that's possibly on those cameras because he had cameras in the crib. Man. So people are thinking that maybe that there'll be other people involved. If you ever been butt naked, if you ever been butt naked anywhere with Diddy or half, half butt naked with Diddy and there was some women around, awesome men around, that he told you were part of the party party? You probably going to jail. Half butt naked is insane. All right. If you possibly on any of those tapes, like Envy just said, <laughs> that they seized from that house. That's right. You probably going to jail when they start throwing that word racketeering around. But we'll see what happens. Hell, if you walked in a room and saw Diddy in there smashing Carl Winslow, allegedly. What? If Diddy flew Carl out, you might be going to jail. Can we? we okay. Why are you going to let Carl we, out there like that? We going. We going. Call call. We'll, we'll be back with more guys. I'm just we, saying we, we, that racketeering pack, pack ain't no joke. For Carl, no, pack it up for All Carl. Right. When we come back, we got front page news, and then EVE will be joining us. EVE will be in the building, so don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Hold up.
Every day I wake up. Uh, wake your ass up. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Now let's get in some front page news. Lauren LaRose is filling in for Jess. Some quick football scores if you're just waking up. If you're an Eagles fan, well, you lost. That's right. The Falcons beat the Eagles 22-21. to And we got to congratulate Aja Wilson. Uh, she scored 1,000 points in a season. The first WNBA player to do that. So congratulations to her. Now, where are we starting off with, Morgan? Listen, there is drama within the Republican Party right now after far-right activist Laura Loomer posted racist comments on social media saying that the White House will smell like curry Jeez. if Kamala Harris wins. Now, during an interview with Meet the Press, Republican VP nominee J.D. Vance, he said he did not like the comments, but he further made comments of his own. Let's hear those comments from J.D. Vance. I think what Laura said about Kamala Harris is not what we should be focused on. We should be focused on the policy and on the issues. And look, so yeah, do I agree with what Laura Loomer said about Kamala Harris? No, I don't. I also don't think that this is actually an issue of national import. Is Laura Loomer running for president? No. Kamala Harris is running for president. And whether you're eating curry at your, chicken, at your dinner table or fried chicken, things have gotten more expensive thanks to her policies. Let's talk about the person running for president of the United States, not a social media personality who supports Donald Trump. Excuse me, fried chicken? Oh, okay. That is crazy. Like, the right. racism is just so just, just so blatant, just so in your face. Right, you're trying to clean it up and you're making more of a mess. Um, so I think it's important. Also note that J.D. Vance is married to an Indian-American woman, Usha Vance, whose parents migrated from India to the U.S. He also said uh, prior to those comments that he makes a mean chicken curry, but I doubt that because it's supposed to be curry chicken. Um, not going to get too much into that, but <laughs> some Republicans are condemning Donald Trump's association with uh, Laura Loomer. Um, so they're fighting back against uh, those comments that she made and those uh, that list in actually includes senators Tom Tillis and Lindsey Graham and Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. Imagine MTG entering the chat, um, calling someone racist. But that's exactly what she did. She said uh, Laura Loomer's uh, comments were uh, rhetoric and a hateful tone. And uh, she called her problematic uh, someone who and someone who doesn't represent MAGA as a whole. So there seems to be some uh, trouble within the uh, paradise of the GOP party. And what's wrong with curry chicken? I love curry chicken. They never want no damn curry season, chicken. season, right? I ain't eating no curry chicken from that man. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not him. But, you oh. know, if Kamala's making it, I might pull up for sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Speaking of which, uh, switching gears, uh, let's uh, say we have less than 50 days until the 2024 presidential election. Um, so, I'll, for one, I hope you are registered to vote. Secondly, the chief of the United States Postal Service says he's fully committed to ensuring the timely delivery of ballots in this year's election. U.S. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy responded on Monday to concerns raised last week about three dozen election officials from the National Association of State Election Directors. The group questioned the USPS's ability to deliver millions of ballots, citing concerns about processing facility operations and frontline training deficiencies. Now, DeJoy says he plans to hold a call with state officials to speak to their concerns. The USPS is currently delivering mail in just over two and a half days, but is urging voters to mail their ballots at least one week before their state's deadline. And if you need that, uh, vote.gov is a great reference on um, just voting reference if you need uh, resources in regards to, you know, ballots and how to access them state by state, uh, vote.gov. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, um, in other news, uh, the murder trial of three former Memphis police officers who are accused in the beating death of Tyree Nichols entered its second week yesterday. A Shelby County judge on Friday agreed to allow response to resistance forms filled out by the officers to be introduced as evidence after an attempt by defense attorneys to have them suppressed. Now, former Memphis police officers Tadarius Bean, Demetrius Haley, and Justin Smith are on trial for the beating death of Nichols during a traffic stop back in 2023. Former officers Desmond Mills and Emmett Martin are expected to testify in the case after they have already accepted plea deals. Now, didn't one of the officers say he wasn't a threat when he was snatched from the car? Yes, he did. Mm. Yes, he did. So, yeah, I, yeah, this is this is and, and trust me, all of that will probably surface within this um, this trial. And uh, in my last story, sports related news, U.S. gymnast Jordan Childs, she's appealing the decision that left her stripped of a bronze medal in the Paris Olympics. Now, Childs lost out 
on bronze in the women's gymnastics floor routine when Romanian team challenged the decision to revi- uh, to revise her final score. Now, the Court of Arbitration for Sport sided with the Romanians, giving them uh, the gymnast medal. Child's attorney said on Monday that everything about the court's decision was unfair and that the court refused to consider video evidence that the initial revision was requested in time. So continue the fight, Jordan Childs. We see you, girl. And uh, yeah, bring that bronze back home. All right. Well, that was That's front page pro- news. Yes, that is your front page news. Follow me on socials at Morgan Media. And for more news coverage, make sure you're following the Black Information Network and BINnews.com. Thank y'all. Thank you, Morgan. All right. When we come back, Eve will be joining us. We're going to kick it with Eve. Her new new memoir, Who's That Girl, is out right now. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV, Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Jess is out on maternity leave. So we have Lauren LaRosa filling in. And we got a special guest in the building. The legendary. Her book is out right now. Who's that girl? EVE, ladies and gentlemen. Eve. What's up? Morning, y'all. Welcome. Good morning. How you feel? How you feel? I feel good. Happy to be here. You got the memoir out, man. Who's that girl? One thing you tell folks right out the gate. And how much you initially hated the name Eve. Could you explain that for the people who haven't read the book yet? <laughs> yes, because I thought I was cursed. Because I grew up Jehovah's Witness. Mm-hmm. Um, my grandma was Jehovah's Witness and religious. And Eve was the one who made the evil happen in the world. She mm-hmm. gave the apple to Adam. So I actually literally for years thought that I was cursed having that name. You know, I grew up Jehovah's Witness too, but you're the first person that ever made me look at that from that perspective. Because most people just say Eve is the first lady. Lady, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. No, I felt like, well, damn, she's she's responsible for evil. Like, because people used to say to me when I was a kid, like, you, oh, you, you gave Adam the gave Adam the apple, like. Literally, mm-hmm. and I'm like, that's crazy. Why would you say that Adam. to a kid? <laughs> yeah. Also, like, yes, like I don't know him, but yeah, no, I really did think I was cursed. But then you grew to love your name, yes, Eve Jahan, because Eve you Jahan. found out what it meant. Yes, Jahan means universe. Eve means first lady. And my mom was obsessed with Shah Jahan that built the Taj Mahal, mm-hmm. and she changed a letter. And then I was like, wow, Eve Jahan, like. Mm-hmm. That's a big deal. And I, yeah, I love my name now. First Lady of the Universe. First Lady That's of the right. Universe. Powerful. What point in your life was that switch from I hate it to yeah. now I'm embracing it? Like, how old were, were you? Like- I was, that was like, honestly, even 30s, late 20s, 30s. Cause I was still in, I don't know, I was such a tormented person within myself. Mm-hmm. Um, it took a while. It was years also that I just didn't trust myself. And I talk about in the book, like, with drinking and stuff, I just didn't trust myself. So it took a it took a while. I was reliving yeah. all these memories, right? Because a lot of these Ooh, stories, Lord. I feel they, naked. You gave it up. No, I feel you gave it real up. Yeah, like naked. You talked about you a lot in this book. I talk about a lot in this book. Mm-hmm. I definitely we reread stuff. I definitely was like, do I really want to put this stuff out here? But I was like, I think it's important. Mm-hmm. I think it's important for myself. I think it's important for my kid. I don't want to bring any of my. Sh- onto my kid mm-hmm. but and it's so cheesy to say but you know it's, it's a, what's that saying what you reveal you can heal yeah what you um, don't heal you can't you, reveal yes mm-hmm. yep. exactly and it's like I just feel like I need to shed some of that mm-hmm. shit. and yeah what so, was the most difficult thing to write in the book what was the hardest part the hardest mm-hmm. I, I think being really vulnerable uh, vulnerable about my drinking for real mm-hmm. because I talked about it when I was on the talk I, I talked about it mm-hmm. yes I had an issue but I don't even think I actually admitted it to myself also the fact that I had I had this eptopic pregnancy when I was on my my um, sitcom mm-hmm. that I never told anybody about and I actually did not even recognize it until I was ready to get pregnant with my kid mm. so I never even dealt with it at all so that was really hard. What made you deal with it now? You felt like there's other women probably dealing with it. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and the frustration of being a woman. And and I talked about this the last time when I was here um, with with the crew of Queens, and we talked about. Um, well, I mentioned about in, endometriosis and having fibroids and shit like that, and how doctors just don't listen to you, mm-hmm. um, and having to go get a specialist to find out that I had that. And I think it's just important. There's so many women that are suffering with infertility, and lots of definitely lots of black women lots of my friends are still suffering so yeah i think it's just important 
the, I know that that was back in 2006. Yeah. Um, and I've actually been through that. Oh, wow. Time. Yeah. So yeah. when I when I heard you talk about it in the book, I was like, oh, shoot, because it's it's like it just happens. Like, you don't even know why it happens. Yep. After that happened, when you were looking to have your baby that you have now, yeah. were you a bit nervous about like if it would work out? Oh or like, God. would you be safe during the pregnancy? Like, what were your thoughts? I was so nervous. I was so anxious. And, and I'm an ang- anxiety written person, which is why I drink and smoke so much weed <laughs> to chill, try to chill myself out. I was so anxious. I was so nervous. And I talk about in the book how I was like anxiety master level when I was pregnant on the set of Queens because I was like, here it is. Okay, I'm working, which is great. And I'm so grateful and blessed. But is it to the detriment of my kid? Like, am I going to lose this baby? Like, I was literally going to the doctor trying to hear the heartbeat just so I could feel calm on set. So, yeah, I was scared. I was really, really scared. You you know, it's crazy when you younger and you don't know what anxiety and I guess, you know, depression is. Yeah. We all have those coping mechanisms because they're all around. So whether it's in the lifestyle, in the hood, just growing up, you see family members drinking. And then I know hip hop didn't help. Oh, yeah. No, (laughs) hell no. No, have another drink. (laughs) Smoke some more. Oh, yeah. Smoke some more. Oh, you crying? It's fine. Have a drink. Like, no, hell no. Because everybody was doing it. Also, nobody was using these words. Nobody was talking about anxiety. Nobody was talking about mental health. Nobody was talking about depression. That's right. Like, literally it was just like all right well you'll be all right mm-hmm. you'll be all right you'll be all right like i that it, it was what it was it was what it was so when did you time, realize you had a problem like you just like what made you say, honestly okay, my dui mm. my dui was the time that and not not even just the moment of the dui it was when i couldn't drink mm. so i had 56 days where i couldn't drink and i was so scared of that 56 days because i couldn't remember a time where i hadn't drank so I even begged my lawyer at the time, like, can I go do community service at a hospice? Can I go like, I'll do anything. And she was like, no, this is what you have to do. And I say this in the book, it saved my life because it was the first time in a very long, actually not even a very long time. It was the first time I ever sat with my f-ing emotions, mm-hmm. like actual, why am I drinking? Mm-hmm. What am I trying to cover up? Why am I trying to numb myself? What is the problem? And I had to sit with my and I cried a lot and I needed it. I needed it. At that time, what were friends, family, associates? So my other issue is that I push people away. And that's another thing that I realized is emotionally. um, I didn't grow up in a family that really talked. We didn't say I love you. We didn't say I hate you. If it was bad, we screamed. Also, you just knew you were loved. Mm -hmm. So I really just didn't know about, I didn't know communication. And I always felt like, my mom had me young, so I feel like we grew up together. So I always felt like I needed to be independent. She raised me very independent, fiercely independent. Mm -hmm. So I think I was just like, I need to deal with this on my own. Plus, I'm a Scorpio. Like, I think it has a lot to do with that. Like, I don't know. So how are you as a parent now? Because I think my parents, probably Charlemagne's parents, those older parents were always, they never really show much love. They never said, I love you. You knew it was there. And you're from Philly, too. And I'm from Philly, feisty Philly. Like, listen, you better just get on with it. So how are you as a mom? I'm a smother mother. I am a smother. (laughs) I'm like, come here, come here, come here. And he's already like, mama, get off me. And I was actually scared that I wouldn't connect. I swear to God. I was like... And I, my sister-in-law told me that too. She has three kids. And she was like, don't feel weird because some women sometimes just don't connect immediately. Mm-hmm. And I just thought possibly because of the way I grew up, maybe I won't be. You know what I'm saying? And it makes me emotionally... Because like so it's just it's a freedom it's so f- nice and I, I'm just gonna he's gonna be spoiled and he's probably gonna get away with That's a lot okay. of shit. but are, are you raising him out of fear or love oh now that is a good question love for sure love but I tackle with fear mm. I tackle with fear so yeah but you want him to be in a position where he really calls mom regardless of 100%. anything you know because even, even growing up you call your parents when you had to. Had to. But now my son, who's <laughs> he's about to be 21, he calls his mom for everything. And I yeah. love their relationship. Yeah. Because I know that if something happens, mom got his back. You yeah. Know? And nah, that- that's real. I do. Because I couldn't talk to my mom about and not, And it's not her fault. Like, my mom, me and my mom now are like... Mm-hmm. It's not her fault. It's how she grew up. Yeah, I was scared of my mother, mm-hmm. which is fine. I think a little fear we is important. <laughs> yes, you but know she what was saying? probably scared for you growing 100%. up on, on Murder Street, right? Hundred percent. So, so, that, so that's why I, I asked, were they really yeah. raising you out of? Are you raising them out of fear of love? Because yeah. our parents raised us out of fear because mm-hmm. they didn't want us to end up in bad situations. Hundred percent. Or end up like them, like yeah. my dad. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. All right, we got more with Eve when we come back. Don't move. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Laurel La Rosa's filling in for Jess. We're still kicking it with Eve, Charlemagne. Another good part in the book is uh, unbeknownst to Jay Z, he put a battery in your back. Yeah. Early. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's funny because um, that was one of those things that we were like, do we put this in there? Because I know mm-hmm. how people get. But 
it was nothing bad about that. Um, so. You know, it's it's one of those things where it was a very amazing phone call that I needed. That was one of those. I always felt like I was the underdog anyway. And he wasn't saying it out of malice or mean. That wasn't about that. It was fact, really. It felt like he was trying to temper your expectations. Yes, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. But I was like, eh, okay, let me see. I'm going to show you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. And, and, it, and it went on to be fine. But and, and like I say in the book, we all have that person, that something, no matter mm-hmm. what industry or whatever. You know what I'm saying? We all have that thing. Or someone says something they don't even know. Mm-hmm. That you're like, okay, I'm going to use that. No problem. One of the dopest you know things I, mean? I love is is you talk about your big brothers in the industry, right? Because okay. you don't really hear that that much. Yeah. And how Rough Riders and, oh and, and all them, you know, kind of was your big brothers to make sure they protected you. Talk about oh, that yeah. a little bit because nah. in this industry, you hear so many crazy stories, but yeah. they were showing up with knives, guns, and everything <laughs> they needed to to make sure you were safe. Listen, I was so protected. I'm, I'm so forever grateful as well that Rough Riders is the crew that I come from. They respected me, protected me, celebrated me, allowed me to be me at all times and yeah if they had to shake it I don't know <laughs> you know what I'm that was one of the things I was wondering about that's why I was so excited to meet you I was like I wonder how much how Philly she's still gonna be no Philly I never that can never go that can never ever go I do say words now and then I will say my manager's there he's from London I will say cause for, the, for my baby I try to keep like consistent so yeah. I do say rubbish sometimes and mm-hmm. I do say jumper but Philly is always Always. You can't take it out of me. You can't take it out of me. Your baby's a bit older now. I know um, I saw you talk about exposing your husband to like E from Philly, yeah. like whatever. How do you, like, are you having those conversations with your baby yet? Are you, is he back and forth to Philly? Like, are yeah. you doing that exposure to Yes, no. He comes back and forth to Philly. We'll be there in a few days. He was just there not a few months ago um, playing with his cousins. Like, and I love that because it's a different vibe. And I love that. And mm-hmm. I feel like he needs that. And it's going to be such a rich childhood for him because England is so different. Yeah. Um, does and he his have an cousins. Accent? Yes, he does. He Aww. says garage. Garage. <laughs> he says garage. <laughs> wait till he says John. John. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, I need to start teaching him that now. Okay. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the, in the Things Fall Apart chapter, you said that you feel like the spirit of the Rough Riders died with. DMX, God bless the dead. Yes. When, when that RR chapter of your life closed, did you did you feel a sense of grief with that as well? <sighs> yes and no. Yes, in the sense of obviously f- with X because of X, a hundred percent. Um, but no, in the sense that we've all kind of gone off and been doing our own shit for so long mm-hmm. in between all of that. Because you know, before he died, may he rest. Um, we were supposed to do. A Rough Riders tour. We have been talking about a Rough Riders tour. So yes and no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, you know, the, the TV show Eve. Yes. The name of the show was Eve. Yeah. But your character's name was Shelly. I know. Why? Why? That's what the network wanted. And then they was like, oh, like the Cosby's. Where it was, they were the Huxtables. Uh, but his name was Cosby. Uh, okay, so okay, everybody okay. knew the show. Trust me, I tried to fight them. I never thought about that. Never thought about that. Never thought about that. They, 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 I, they I, had to, I tried to fight them. That's yeah. another part of your life I feel like doesn't get talked about enough. You yeah. had a sitcom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Literally. You know what I mean? Yeah. That did well. Yeah, that did well. I was very, very lucky. It did well. And I didn't take it as seriously as I feel like I should have or could have. And I talk about that in the book. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in regrets, but probably that's my only one of my only um, ones where I just didn't take it as seriously as I could have. What would you have done different? I would have shown up to table reads not coming straight from the club. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not be having um, after parties in my dressing room. Mm-hmm. I was doing, yeah. But I was the youngest on set and I was trying to figure out how- You were how a real rapper. I was a real rapper. <laughs> like, a real rapper like literally, like I was having after party. We'd come from the club, go to my dressing room and then I'm like, damn, I gotta be on set. Like not realizing like how many- people how many the crew you know yeah. what i'm saying like so i just i really would have done that different yes i've got to ask about you know the, the kept woman comment right oh god like people forget who you are and all the things that you did i've been working for a long long what time is that, what does that come from like Eve's i a don't woman know and, and this, that. And i'm like do y'all know even the work also, that she put in and i have been kept working woman, no. there's nothing wrong she's not one no. there's not listen if you can do it if you can get great god bless you if that's what you want and that's who you are i have zero personally i have zero problems with it i think it's a disservice to who i am and what i've done and what i've built for myself that's why i have a problem with it mm-hmm. like yeah okay yeah i married this dude i'm not gonna marry a broke dude that's real like but he's not I think people also have put on him more than what he is and he's not that we we do stuff for each other together like 
He's just a dude I fell in love with. Like, Let me Google it. He's a billionaire, one. right? Oh, okay. He's not a billionaire. Oh, because that no. was always the headlines I saw. I know. Like, even I'm like, and that's why I'm like, no, he's baby not girl, a billionaire. Yeah. He's not a billionaire. See, I'm looking it up. Come on, hurry up, man. <laughs> Listen, he's a a bird, by the way. He looks no, like everybody else. He man got up. millions in his name. You gotta, you gotta, you know. Lord, <laughs> no. But at the same time, no, I'm not kept. If I didn't want to work, it'd be fine. But it's. I just who I am to the core to my DNA like I just it's just who I am and how was the transition to London like yeah. when you decided to move to London no you had to be scared as no a it was one place though you it was it. one place and it was good and they were from um, they you, they did have Amoroso's bread which was the good bread mm -hmm. but then I think they shut down okay so how was moving to <laughs> 60 London 60 million by the way 60, 60 million, million? Oh, where the billionaire okay. thing came from I don't know I think maybe because he's white and British I don't even know <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I swear to God. And I never like, fact checked that. I just, uh, maybe because he is white and British, I, I thought swear. it was true. Because I'm, like, I'm going to be honest, I never fact checked that. It was a bad guy, y'all would have fact checked that. It. it was you, and then it was, remember when Rihanna was with the. Oh, yes. the, the, yeah, those, yeah. Those, those, they had like photos yeah, of y'all, like, like, girls, we can do it. No. It was like, girls, oh, we can no, do it. For there real? were memes, yeah. That's why I remember how much money I thought he was no. worth. Was because no, 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 no. So, how was the transition to moving to London? No cheesesteak? Yeah, no, it was hard. The first two years were really brutal, definitely. And I still have moments where I miss like conveniences and things I know British people I love you because you're different you good you you, you warm but some of them ain't warm cold some of them could be cold it's hard to get in there like um, it took a minute it takes a minute it takes a minute and it's still weird and different but I've been there 10 years mm -hmm. like it is actually home so so when you get a presidential race here you'd be like alright I'm just gonna stay in London no but I'm still voting from there mm -hmm. I already put in my like absentee make sure y'all get my absentee like because it's important because mm -hmm. I'm still American mm -hmm. I am American and I do care what happens here because at one at some point I want to come back with my kids so he experience I want him to go to college here mm. like that is my goal like I want him to come back and I pray by then that the country is what it needs to be alright we got more with Eve when we come back let's get to an Eve mini mix it's the breakfast club good morning morning everybody it's DJ NV Jess Hilarious Charlemagne the guy we are the breakfast club Laura LaRosa is filling in for Jess that was an Eve mini mix let's get back to our interview with Eve we got to talk about NYU. What are you doing with yes. NYU? Yeah, so I am Professor Jeffers Cooper now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing their um, Steinhardt residency, year residency. So mm -hmm. basically, I get to teach whatever I want or just come and just, uh, I won't say vibe because it's more than that, but it's like conversations. Um, about who I am, what I am, what they offer, and then we're gonna do like a big event in the spring with um, with some of the students from there, the musicians, everything like that. So this is a huge deal for me because I mean I never knew this was even available. I would have never even thought this was something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I'm very very honored to be there. Scholar in residence. Scholar, Scholar in residence, residence at NYU. Yes. Yeah. So you, do you have to be there? Or will it be? I do. So Zoom or no? So the, I have to do two. I'm doing my first event next Saturday just like meet and greet and then I do my first official one in November so you have a curriculum and everything yeah um, first official one in November I'm gonna do one in London mm -hmm. and then in the spring back here so and then wow. if I wanna continue then we'll see what happens but when yeah. you're here does your family like your husband and all you guys kids come with you or the baby they? is here but my husband is doing gumball which is oh, how we met his ra his rally yeah. um, it's my first one I haven't done in 10 years wow. but and they're in Asia so hi baby do it right wraps it all I write poems mm -hmm. more. I went back to that because that's where I kind of first started. Mm -hmm. That being said, we are talking about, because this book also falls around the 25th anniversary of my first album. Oh, wow. So, mm -hmm. yes, um, Let There Be Eve. So we are talking about reworking stuff to put it out next year. So there will be some new stuff next year. If you rework stuff or like do anything music-wise, would you add any of the new girl artists? To I definitely anything? want to. Who I definitely want to. to. We're still top, talking top about two, it. Top three go-tos. Oof. Yeah, I don't know. That's hard. I ain't even gonna lie because we've been talking about it because ultimately I, I don't want to do anything that looks like I'm just jumping on some shit just mm -hmm. to jump on it. I feel like it needs to be um, it has to be organic and right for those those kind of the rec those records. So we're still figuring it out. I always want to know what the thought process was back then, because when you came out, like, I'm just thinking about it. You did. You wasn't in a single box, right? Yeah. You did the sexy rap at times. Yeah. But then you did the women empowerment rap. But then I you don't even remember Eve doing sexy rap. She just was a fly chick. No, so, but I think yeah. it's, the demeanor was sexy, though. Yeah. It was very much like yeah. NBE. Yeah, I don't think... Yeah, lyrically, I don't think I really went there. Mm -hmm. But when it came to maybe, like, yeah, style. Yeah, style. style. She didn't yeah, have the force. Yeah, it was, yeah, it wasn't a force. When you did Love is Blind, did, was the label behind it? Or they was like, this is totally from what's out now? I was shocked that they were behind it. 
I was actually really shocked, um, especially that early in my career with Rough Riders. But mm-hmm. they were they were completely behind it. I think once I added the third verse, where I also popped them, like it also <laughs> like, killed them, killed them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like I think that was fine. But um, yeah, they were totally behind it. Yeah. Well, we I know you said earlier that you guys have been talking about a reunion um, yes. before DMX passed. Yeah. Would you con- or would y'all consider doing something like that now without him being here? Or you feel like it couldn't be done without him? I don't know. I would leave that up to DMY to figure out. I think that would be up to them. And if they want to bring us together, I'll always be there, of course. Yeah. But I think it's more up to them to figure it out. Yeah. You know, know, in the Hollywood chapter, you talk about going to the Church of Scientology. Yeah. Could could you explain to the people (laughs) what the hell made you do that? You break all the rules. Because I got invited by somebody who I was like a rap legend. A rap rap legend. Yes. That I was like, well, if you're going. I just need to see. Plus, I'm very much Bart Simpson. Like, I'm very much, I will touch the fire just mm-hmm. to make sure it's fire. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, who, when the hell else am I going to get into the celebrity Scientology Center? Um, I was scared as shit the whole time I was in there. I did not eat the food. So I was like, they are going <laughs> to drug me. You. Yes, yeah. and brainwash you me. You got to break it down when you walked in there. What was it? Was it, it you was need to go buy the so book. But yes. was it people well, yeah, wearing clothes? Who was the book? Rap, but it was who crazy. Was the, who was the rap I don't want to say because I don't even know if it's, she's, I don't want to out nobody. Because I don't even know if she's still doing it. So only for those those reasons child that shit was crazy and I was hung over that was the other thing <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was, I remember that that's why I was so stressed but it was very weird you definitely gotta read that chapter so you walk weird. in and is there like access codes or like what is no it? but there's people hoods. with you there's like people everywhere in every like there are people everywhere watching everything and there are special people to walk you to the, it was cr- they all wear the same thing like it was crazy you know what I wanted to ask you in the evil destruction chapter you talk about your time with after Math and, yeah. you know, when you got dropped from the label, Dre didn't even bother to call you. How was it when things came full circle? You done blew up and yeah. y'all ended up doing Let Me Blow Your Mind. Did y'all even, did you bring that up to him? Like, you know, you ain't even called me when you... No, I didn't even need to. I remember before we even did Blow Your Mind, we did the Source Awards. And I was like, yeah, I'm on the same stage as you with the Rough Riders. Like, mm-hmm. so... It went from that to Jimmy being like, y'all need to get back in the studio, do a song. And it was kind of just me being so extra extra Philly mm-hmm. like yeah okay well let me hear the beat let me hear the, like so <laughs> extra like so we never ever discussed it but we also knew listen Dre is the one the, the greatest like right so I knew he was gonna get it out of me I just I made it hard word the book is out <laughs> right now who's Make that girl that who's that girl yes. I appreciate you for joining us no one, thank you for I, having me I got y'all. one final question about yes. who's that girl yes who, who were you at the start of this book yeah and, and, oh, that's who, a good and who would you say you are oh that's now. a good question um, at the start, I definitely tried to write it like an interview. And Kathy actually checked me on that because she was like, look, I don't want to take you back to trauma, but you need to emote for people to understand where you're coming from. So I think I was slightly guarded. And then as I went through it, and I'm getting, I don't know why I'm getting emotional. It's OK. Go First ahead. time somebody asked me this question. Home. I just feel like all that that I had on, mm-hmm. like one of my healers used to call it an invisible backpack of other people's shit. Listen, my life's been great. This is this is not a book about being like this is not a book. This is a book about me realizing how as much as I say I was in this personal turmoil turmoil term turmoil, turmoil. turmoil. Yes, turmoil. turmoil. Um how determined I was to believe in myself mm-hmm. to get to a certain place. And that at the end of the book I was like, "Damn, I'm proud of myself." So, yeah. All right. <laughs> Who's well, that girl in memoir out right now? Thank you for joining us this thank morning. Thank you. I did not expect tears to mm. on like at all. But thank you for having me. I'm glad he didn't fall because we ain't got no tissue. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the right there. Right. I was looking at the right there. You didn't even try. You didn't even try to pass him to the top. Put him in the corner so he can't touch it. You can let it flow. We need it for the content. Hand him the tissues. All right. Let it throw it. All right. It's the Breakfast Club. It's Eve. Morning, everybody. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. News is real, weather is real. Glorious Jessica Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess. Worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's a coach of shoes. With Lauren. Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk to me.
So Jesse Collins, who is um, he helps produce the Super Bowl. He produces major award shows for anybody that does not know him and his work. Um, he's actually producer over the 2025 Super Bowl that will be coming. Um, and he sat down and did an interview with uh, Variety. And in the interview, um, they talked about a bunch of different stuff, but they did ask him about the decision to choose Little Wayne over um, Kendrick Lamar. I'm sorry to choose Kendrick Lamar over Little Wayne. Now he responded with a, a few quotes that are going viral now, right now because he basically pinned that decision totally on Jay Z. And there, you know, there's been the conversation about if Jay Z was responsible for this decision or not, and if people should be upset about it or not. So, in one quote, Jesse Collins says, "We love Wayne." Uh, when the subject was raised. Um, he said, there's always Vegas odds on who's going to get to perform. But I think we're going to do an amazing show with Kendrick and everybody's going to love the halftime show. I know Kendrick works hard to deliver an amazing show. And then he went deeper and he said he then he then um, said that ultimately Jay-Z is who makes the final call with his Rock Nation. Uh, with the fact that Rock Nation serves as a ha halftime co-producer. It's a decision that Jay makes. Since we've been on board with that show, when he says we, he's talking about his production company, Jay has made it every year, the decision of who performs, and it's been amazing. He's always picked right. So this was circulating like crazy because people were like, see, y'all out here blaming, uh, I don't know, Lil Wayne's work ethic when really it's Jay-Z and people have this whole narrative that Jay-Z hates Lil Wayne and blah, blah, blah. One of the people that was kind of doubling down on this narrative, not even kind of, but doubled down on this narrative was Nicki Minaj. Mm -hmm. um, so... When uh, Glock Topics on Twitter retweeted one of the quotes from Jesse Collins saying that Jay-Z picked the people every single year, Nicki Minaj retweeted that with the laughing emoji. Um, and then, you know, she went, she, she's done so much with the rant. So she, just a tweet from one of her rants after this, uh, deny, or previous, when she talked about denying a young black man a right to play, uh, to put in for this game um, because of what he's done prior to. Uh, she's talking about people having hate for Birdman, Drake, Nicki, um, so now that they're now they're punishing Lil Wayne, uh, Lil Wayne is a goat. Nola was good. Like y'all know, Nikki be going on her rants, but basically mm -hmm. she was saying that she felt like Lil Wayne was being punished because people have issues with some of his artists and just issues surrounding him. So it's falling back on him, but he's the goat and he should have the chance to do the New Orleans Super Bowl. It's crazy how I couldn't even get through that. Tweet. Well, she keep that. Same, I would say keep all of that same energy in February when Kendrick Lamar and Dave Free put on one of the greatest Super Bowls we've ever seen. Not to mention, um, if Jay Z gets all the credit, then he gets all the credit for all other great Super Bowls that we've seen. He gets credit for the weekend. He gets credit for Dre and Snoop. He gets credit for Usher. He gets credit for Rihanna. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but people could also, uh, you know, want their choice and want to know why that wasn't their choice. That's their, you know, their, their right to to want that. But I'm I'm with you know before Rock Nation took over. Do y'all remember the acts that we used to see at the halftime show? So Beach Boys. Yes. Okay. Maroon Five. Uh, Which I don't have no problem. Maroon Five. But Rolling Maroon Stones. Five. Are they alive? Rolling Stones are alive uh -oh. and they're fantastic. Don't be disrespectful. I'm just, I don't know. Okay. I, don't, I don't listen to that. I'm just asking. I don't know. <laughs> so they okay. asking the same thing well, about no, our artists. I, I don't know. If I'll be honest with you, man. You know, you, you know, it, it ain't about who don't appreciate things. It's about who does. Yeah. So keep that same energy in February when Kendrick Lamar puts on one of the greatest Super Bowls. We've ever seen. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, and let's also be clear too. If the Super Bowl, and I was one of those people that was saying Little Wayne and and I and, thought Little Wayne should Drake be the friends in New Orleans, but Drake it's only because it was in New Orleans. If it wasn't in New Orleans, I wouldn't be thinking about that at all. And I don't know where I got that expectation other than L.A. I got the expectation LA. from L.A. And then they it's gave because us Dre and Snoop and, and the Rams was in the Super Usher Bowl. Was Usher too. Usher because he did but, the residency. But, yeah, because he was in Vegas, Vegas for yes. so long, so it felt like that was his home for a minute. That's it. That's the only reason. It was not like the Super Bowl was in Barbados, y'all. But, but Rihanna performed. You know, now you're right. But they do have the records. They do have the hits to do the Super Bowl. Yeah, but are we are, are we not arguing? That, oh, okay. Though, I'm right? not you know mad I mean? at Kendrick Lamar. It's Kendrick Lamar, guys. Come on. I'm not mad at Kendrick Lamar either. <laughs> you know Kendrick who else? Lamar. You know who else is not mad about any of this whatsoever? Jay Z. He yeah, was he tripping. Uh, never like him and Beyonce be so unbothered. I'm trying to drink whatever tea they drink in the morning. Like they be so unbothered. He was out in um, New Jersey. Uh, they cut the ribbon for the first fanatic sports book at Ocean Casino Resort. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Atlantic City. Atlantic um, City. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he not bothered whatsoever. Smiling, happy, having a great time. People mad at that when they say, "Why Atlantic City, not Brooklyn?" What he meant. <laughs> but then if he brings no if, bring, if he brings something here, because I heard before people were complaining complaining when it was the reports that he was bringing. Something oh, he was here trying to bring something to Times Square. Pray. He's still trying to bring it to Times yeah. Square. I pray that Rock Nation gets the casino bid for Times Square. Okay, I, the streets need that. The streets right up, need what? That. Imagine Friday we just leave here and go right up the street to the casino. You don't go nowhere. I would go to that because you know why? Because it's gonna be not just a casino. It's gonna be probably it's a hotel. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be there. It's gonna be, be food in there. It's gonna be restaurants. 
I, you'll be there for thing. two weeks when it first opened. Why you sit back like that? Because you lie, you know I'm not going. Yeah, you ain't but going that don't mean it. I wouldn't want him <laughs> to the city. He'll go. He'll, no, he'll, he'll go. 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 He'll go to that. He'll go. He'll go. Look, call me when you get outside. Nah, he'll, he'll go. Ain't even going to answer the phone. There'll be a back entrance. He'll go right in that back door. I would well, go for that. In other news, I'm not, oh. <laughs> you ain't learned yet. Hold huh? on, wait. All right, them what di- with them the diamonds getting them sealed. You better be. Ca- you better be quiet. <laughs> Today <laughs> is not the day to be freaked out. Never been to the NYPD. And why you know, like I know, NYPD is tuned in. Today is not the day to be freaked out and be. I've never been to the NYPD. I've never been to the NYPD. Have you? You was over there. I was not. You tripped and fell and had a freak accident. I was not. Yes, you did. I definitely had a freak accident there. No, I didn't. They call you freak accident envy. No, I didn't have no freak accident there. No slip, trip, no fall. No busting nothing. No busting nothing. No no busting nothing. I know that's right. <laughs> trying to get ahead of them in diamonds. Yo, I never bust my ass. Nothing. Nah, there was no freak accidents. Just stop talking. I didn't fall. I didn't get it's in the over. pool. The that big is bed over. he had in the backyard. I was not in that bed. I was nowhere near there. But I bust my ass and yeah. did What? <laughs> Envy, I told you to stop talking. You just want to keep going. Excuse me? I was never there, ma'am. You were never there? Oh, never there. Lord, have mercy. Mm. Mm. Freak I accident hate envy. I hate this place. F A E. Are you finished? Go ahead, Faye. Go ahead. You said, go ahead, what? Faye, freak oh. accident envy. That ain't what I heard you say. <laughs> Chopping screw. <laughs> <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> Chopping screwed up. Damn. No. Now we're back to the 90s. No, Let's no, go. No, Let's drop no, on the cool no, bones for the 90s. Don't drop on the cool bones for that. You better stop. Do not do that, Ray. Why are you feeding into that? I feel like I was with my daddy just <laughs> now. It me. Shout out to my pops. Y'all know I ain't got no words Coast that's Black not Black. supposed to be used nowhere. Woo-hoo. I don't even play them type you of games. You got me crying Woo. now. All right, Lauren. <laughs> Delaware. Go ahead, Delaware. All right. So, man, we giving that dog to? <laughs> so, <laughs> Really over here nervous. No, I'm not nervous. You I didn't say that though. I didn't say that. Well, after the hour, uh, <laughs> let's talk about somebody who may or may not have said something. We'll decide. Lauren? Okay. His name is Rich Lowry. Free oh, okay. accident envy. Leave okay. me alone. <laughs> <laughs> right. He needs to come to the front of the congregation. Uh, we'd like to have a conversation with him. All right, it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Your execution on the donkey of the day is something to behold. Is it a read? Donkey of the day, and I deserve it. People need to know. Well, you need to tell them. I am. You have the voice. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. Tell them. It's time for Donkey of the Day. <laughs> it's a read, but you're so good at it. You're trying to be a fake ass Charlemagne. There's only one Charlemagne involved. Uh, Damn, Charlemagne. Who you give a Donkey of the Day to, man? Well, sexy red. Uh, donkey of the Day for Tuesday, September 17th goes to the editor in chief of the National Review, Rich Lowry. Oh, the mayonnaise is heavy with this one, okay? Uh, Now, as someone who talks for a living, I understand uh, misspeaking. It happens all the time. Lauren just did it, you know? uh, I did not say that (laughs) word. I would never say that word, and don't keep putting that on me. (laughs) We talk a lot, Lauren. It's okay. Okay? All right, Lauren. I talk a lot, you know, from Breakfast Club to Brilliant Idiots. So defensive. A lot of nothing, but I didn't say that word. So defensive. Countless appearances on cable news networks, CNN, MSNBC, Fox. Now you're going to have people going to look for it, Lauren. Whatever it is... (laughs) Whatever it is, I talk a lot, okay? So you're going to slip up and say things you didn't mean to say. You're going to slip up and say things you didn't mean to say, but you were thinking, right, Lauren? Okay? <laughs> one thing one thing I do, uh, you know, is if, if I'm reading something, right? Like right before I'm about to talk, for whatever reason, I may say what I was just reading, especially if I'm not really paying attention to what is being said around me. Have you ever been reading something and someone is trying to talk to you at the same time, but you not really paying that person any attention? because you're so deep into whatever it is you are reading so then when you realize the person is asking you something you reply but it's about what you were reading and has absolutely nothing to do with what they said to you I'm the only person that does that no, oh I do it I all the time okay. all the time okay uh, I said all that to cover for when I misspeak but that has nothing to do with Rich Lowry or Lauren okay see Rich Lowry don't put me with that man <laughs> you keep trying to put me with all these random don't put me with that man I don't got nothing to do with that and I say that word. See, Rich, word. What word? Any word that you thought. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm about to start signing in here. So it's clear. Listen, signing, okay. Rich Lowry was on the Megyn Kelly show, and I don't want to tell you what he said because a lot of times the internet tells us what someone said, and that's all we hear when we listen. So I'm going to play this clip. And I want everyone here at the Black Mothership, a.k.a. the Breakfast Club Studios, and everyone in their cars, you know, everybody listening on the iHeartRadio app, wherever you're listening, uh, I want you to immediately either say out loud what you heard him say, 
Or just hit us on social media and tell me what he said. Okay, this is Rich Lowry, editor in chief of the National Review on Megyn Kelly's show, and he was talking about JD Vance's comments to Dana Bash. Dana Bash. Remember, JD told Dana that the Haitian migrants in Spring. Uh, JD told Dana that the Haitian migrants in Springfield, Ohio, uh, were. What did he say? I forgot what he said. They were eating dogs or something like. Oh, he said that he made it all up basically, uh, just to bring attention to the story. Let's listen. You remember Alternative Facts with Kellyanne? They, they did the same thing. She wasn't saying you, you make up fictions and pretend they're facts. You, you bring other facts to bear in the debate that are being ignored. And that's what he was saying. And I loved, I think it was in, in that interview where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls, and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger, uh, migrants what? taking geese from ponds. <laughs> Okay. Now he Whoa. said what he said. Now, now he said what he said. What did you hear, Lauren? He said the N word. Envy, what did you hear? Oh yeah, absolutely, positively. Red, what did you hear the same? Wow, Nick, Sid, y'all in the room? <laughs> what same? you call him? You wow. Haitian N. Wow. Now normally we don't say uh, the N word, but for journalistic purposes, we have to figure out what he said. Let's play it again to make sure. Just isolate That's it, Red. Wow. I just want to hear that part. Haitian nigger. Wow. Now. We didn't put no sauce on that. Mm -mm. No seasoning. Okay? Just like his mama's food. Let's chop and screw it, Red. What did he say? Haitian nigger. Whoa. Jesus Christ. Whoa. 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 Drop one of Clues bombs for Rich. Why are you dropping a bomb for him? <laughs> Take that bomb back, man. Rich may not have meant to say it, but you said it, Rich. Okay? Whether you may not have meant to say it, but you said it. Now, the reason I'm giving you donkey today is because you're clean up on our... Your cleanup on our nigga game is horrible, okay? Rich said, and I quote on X, I began to mispronounce the word migrants and caught myself halfway through. Play it again for me, <laughs> Ray. Haitian nigger. Now, damn. There are a lot. Can, can we play, play, the, can, can we play yeah. the whole clip? I just want to hear him because he said he, he was messed up the word migrants. It came out of the blue, too. Yeah. You remember Alternative Facts with Kellyanne? They, they did the same thing. She wasn't saying you, you make up fictions and pretend they're facts. You, you bring other facts to bear in the debate that are being ignored. And that's what he was saying. And I loved, I think it was in, in that interview where, where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger uh, <laughs> migrants taking okay. geese from now listen, ponds. There are a lot of words that can get you to N wordville. Okay. The word migrant ain't one of them. All right. Nickel can probably get you to N wordville. Yes. Naga can probably Naga. get you to N wordville. Nicks, maybe if you say in Nickabacus. Nickabacus. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Nickel Nicaragua can definitely get you oh, to the N word. Nicaragua. Wait, what? Nicaragua. Nicaragua. There you go. Nicaragua. There you go. See, that's why I get you there. You, <laughs> yeah. you didn't even have no. You had no intention to go in the N word, Bill. But see, you're, now you're there. Right. Now you're the, there. Those get you to the e, the hard R. That's yeah. what I'm Bill. saying. How do you pronounce that? Nicaragua. Nick knack. Nick knack. Nick knack. Possibly. Mm. Nick knack. Patty White. Give a block a bone. Those words can get you to N word, Bill. But migrants, nah. And your man who works at the National Review, Andrew McCarthy, he came to your defense uh, as well. His reasoning was even dumber. He said on X, and I'm reading this verbatim, ridiculous. Rich obviously got crossed up between immigrants, short eye, and migrants, long eye. Started mispronouncing migrants with short eye, instantly corrected himself with no embarrassment because it was patently a mispronunciation. Jace, you know a white man is frustrated when he says jeez, okay? Listen, uh, <laughs> Andrew, I'll be the first to tell you. I don't know what the hell you was talking about. Okay, immigrant, short eye, migrants, long eye. Has anybody ever heard of that? I've never heard of that. No. Mm. Okay. Uh, all we heard was the N-word, and we were listening for the hard ER. Nothing more, nothing less. Look, you made a mistake, Rich. Okay, the N-word was on your mind. I don't know if the N-word being on your mind is racist or not. Okay, I mean, I, I, I think of crackers quite often. Cheese it's my favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay, rich with some peanut butter, love them. Mm -hmm. All right, club crackers with shrimp dip, yummy. And rich, after what I just saw on Megan Kelly, I gotta say you make me think of crackers too. Okay, please let Chelsea Handler give Rich Lowry the biggest hee haw. Hee haw, hee haw. That is way too much, Dan Mayonnaise. Let, let Kathy Griffin get in on this too. Please give this giant jar of mayo the biggest hee haw. <laughs> I, I ain't heard from my cousin Chris Rock in a minute either. Where, where, where Chris Rock at? Cracker ass cracker. Oh. Hmm. What about my girl? My girl still work the drive-thru? Cracker. Oh, okay.
right. Just making sure all my people still here. All right. They all live. So. All right. Well, That's thank all. you for that donkey today. Mm-hmm. Is it <laughs> Nicaragua? How do you pronounce that? I ain't playing no word games with you. <laughs> no, you, yeah, you <laughs> I ain't playing no games with you. Say Fabletics. <laughs> Lauren? <laughs> Fabletics. Okay. Okay. For sure. All right. All right. Well, well, thank you for that donkey today. Yes, indeed. Now, now, when we come back, let's open up the phone lines. 800-585-1051. We're not going to have time to play it now. we got to play it when we come back. I know, back. but I just want to say there's been, some, uh, there's been some really great things happening in the culture, right? Like, you know, and, you know, Kendrick Lamar put out the song called The Party Is Dead. Right. And he saluted a couple people on the song. LaCrae. He saluted uh, our guy Lecrae. Salute yep. to Lecrae. Drop on the clues bombs for Lecrae. Mm -hmm. And he saluted our guy D1. D1. Shout out to D1. Drop on the clues bombs for D1. And Lecrae and D1 have both made response records. I don't want to say response records. It's more like baton passing. Yes. Right? Because Kendrick passed in the baton and they took off. Was it a response? Yes. Yeah. It was a baton. They both baton, have made I records. Mm -hmm. And I we should play all of them this morning. Because we can't. Okay. We should play Kendrick the Party is Dead. Yeah. Then we should play Lecrae because he was next. He put up the picture with the all white Air Force Ones. Lecrae did, yeah. And, and D1, D1 did put with the Reeboks. The, the Reebok soldiers, right? Because yeah. he's from New Orleans. Right. We should play all of those this morning and, and take phone calls if we if we can. I don't know if we can play all of them. Why can't we play all of them? They long as hell. You ain't got no problem playing all the BS when it's long as hell. Uh, we don't huh? play the BS What's when the it's BS? long as hell. What's the BS? And they're not long as hell. They're long as hell. How long are they? All right, well, let's just play Lecrae and D1. We, Kendrick, we, okay, there we okay, go. We can do that. Go. All right. Well, let's play, let's play, let's play, at least, let's play Kendrick's parts rapping about them. There you and go. There, the you go. there you go. And then we'll take your phone calls if you haven't heard it. 800 585 1051. Let's Because you know what I want to know? What? I want to know if people really do want this. Everybody say a shift is happening, right? They don't want it. I don't. I, I want to know. I want to know do people really want this? Do they want balance? Or they just, they just want this all the time? Well, let's, let's talk about it when we come yes. back. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Come on. The Breakfast Club. Good morning, we are The Breakfast Club. Now, if you're just joining us, we're opening up the phone lines, 800-585-1051. We were talking about Kendrick Lamar. He released a record uh, last week, Friday. Yeah, watch the party die. And on this record, he uh, mentioned... Uh, D1 and Lecrae. And Lecrae Let's right. play it. If you know, they've both been on The Breakfast Club several times. So we want to get that on and take your phone calls, 800-585-1051. It seems like there could be a possible shift in hip-hop. Like That's what we're discussing. Happening. And, and this, is this what we want? Do we want balance? Do we want more of this? Like, mm -hmm. what, what, what we want. Let's talk about it. But let's play Lecrae let's first. Let's play Lecrae. We'll take your calls. We'll play D1 as well. Let's go. Now we got Coach Davis on the line. Coach Davis, what, what you think about Lecrae's joint we just heard? Hey, listen. You know what? Um, I, I, I think a total shift is involved, is needed right now. And I, and I say that because of this, right? Chuck D broke it down. I'm as old as hip-hop at 51 years, right? And Chuck D broke it down. He said Every five years, there's a new generation of hip hop. So we're talking 10 generations right now. And each generation, there's a shift. We went from uh, uh, positivity with self-destruction and, 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 and Chuck D and, and all the positive rap. Then we went to gangster rap. Then from gangster rap, we went to uh, 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 party and, and, and materialism with, with, with P. Diddy and everybody. Then we went to this overhyped um, drill rap, that overhyped sexualized rap. So, so now it's you think it's so now you think it's time to come back? You think it's time to come back? It's time to come back because uh, the dumb and down of America. These, you know, this generation of kids right now are dumb. Uh, it's not did it to them. Well, right. let, and let, I hate let, to say let, it that way. But we need to bring it back. No, say it, speak it straight. Let's well, well, let's get into D1 music because people haven't right. heard the D1 joint as well. If you're just joining us, uh, of course, Kendrick Lamar mentioned D1 and Lecrae on his song that he released on Friday. We just played Lecrae's, uh, I don't want to say response, but passing the, the baton. Yeah, Kendrick passed the baton to Lecrae. Lecrae ran with it. Now D1 got it. He running with it. Let's get into it. It's the Breakfast Love Lamar. Now, if you're just joining us, we played uh, D1's track as a, I don't want to say a response to Kendrick Lamar, but... Uh, as Charlamagne said earlier, it's kind of like passing the baton. We also just play Lecrae. So we're just getting your thoughts. 800-585-1051. What do you think, Lauren? Um, you think, are you asking me if I think people want that? Yes. I don't, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's phenomenal music. I do think, I think people want balance. I, I do think people want balance. Who, I just think, who are people? Like, what people are you talking about? Humans. It, it depends. So you're talking about like everybody as a, like the world. 
Yeah, people. I don't, don't think not, so. I think you don't that think there. Are, no, I think that there are a group of people who are okay with listening to what they listen to that is not conscious, that just makes them feel good, that they just party to, and then they move on. Yeah, and then there's a whole group of people who want to hear stuff like that, and that's what change, I mean yeah. when I say balance because we're talking to all of those people, Lauren. We're not just talking. to Yeah, the but I'm asking you. I thought you meant that all people want the balance, like they want conscious and they want the the other stuff too. I don't believe that all people want both. Oh, I think. Uh, all people? I don't. Probably not. No, I don't think that I don't. I couldn't make a broad generalization. I think, like I that. think it's also what, what, where people are in their life. Like you know, yeah. some people want to hear party music. They want to hear a different types of music. Like Lauren. Lauren wants to turn up. She don't want to hear positivity. She don't want to hear black man put your gun down. She don't want to hear let's work together. She wants to Is hear. He? What? And, I, and I think like the, what? What? And I think the problem. I party with, with you I, before, Lauren. I know. A, in a party, no, I don't want to think about the trials and tribulations of the world. I just want to have a good time. Okay. I th- and I think that's been the problem with radio for so long. The problem with radio for so long, especially hip hop and R and B radio, is that you know we only super serve one audience when it comes to it. Yes, you know at times, I mean? yeah. Yep. So, so I think that's what that's what Kendrick is saying on the party. The party must die. Oh, the party is dead. The party is dead. Die. Or party, yeah, party's dying. The or whatever party must be. die. And um, I, I love Lecrae's responses, and I love D One's um responses but like you said we you know most radio stations don't play that side of it like you you rarely will hear lecrae you rarely will hear uh d1 i mean at times Which you really so, hear a kendrick but it, you, know it, I mean? that you, really, because you really hear a j cole you don't know what think, mean? don't the stuff that y'all have to program to play it goes by what's popular right so well, that's like, my thing even Lord. if you're a dj that's into all of that like the balance but, but that's you my choice you're right but here's the thing oh if you look at the last 15 years of of, of hip-hop right the biggest artists ain't even really on that. The Kendricks, the Coles, you know, even Drake, like Drake, he makes those records, but Drake also makes stuff that makes you think whatever, whatever. Correct. But then you think about the Big Shans and the Wale's and yep. the Chance the Rap. I'm just thinking about all of the people who have been popping over the last 15 years, yeah. right? You Correct. Know, the, 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 the Rhapsodies, who, mm-hmm. who else? It's a bunch of them, right? right? But but even with those people existing, we you still find a way to play the low vibrational stuff that's yeah, but, that's, but, but that's also, in the clubs, But also what most people don't know when it comes to radio stations, right? A record label picks a single and they go for that single. Right. So they push that single hard. They still and, do that now? Yes. And no. the, the majority of the singles that they push are the records that are not like your Lecrae's or the records that's not like D1's or yeah. very, 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 not too much. You, you don't hear that many J. Cole records. You don't hear that many Kendrick mm-hmm. records like that. Because you got a bunch of, salute to all the new guys that's doing that too though. The LaRussells and the Earth Gangs. Um, I love LaRussell. Like, I love him. I love his music. I love the content he puts out. I love how he don't care about nothing but what he does. Yeah. But you don't, you, a lot of people like him don't break through and they're not able to live off of what they're doing. But He's doing very well they could. for himself. But you also got a lot of older executives in place who aren't really paying attention to that and they're so they're so programmed to only do what it is they know which yeah. is research you know yeah. what I mean they still what is research but, but people also feel like I, I know they always also feel like that certain people relate to them because they came come from that area that hood like whether it's Money bag, yo, coming from Memphis, they feel like people will feel that more in certain areas. They feel like somebody coming from Brooklyn or, or from the hoods in New York might feel pop smoke or five year four and more. It's just what people feel like but people relate to them. And some people just don't relate to D one or they don't relate to Lecrae. I think the saturation of artists has a lot to do with it too. Like you don't have to be you don't have to have staying power. You just gotta get a viral song, make it on TikTok and then boom the labels on And I body. think that's the problem. I think that's what radio reacts to. Radio reacts to those viral singles, which is fine, but once again, where's the balance? All right, well, let's That's go to let's go to the phone line. We got Jay on the line. Jay, good morning. Yo, peace, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, peace, Jay, Jay, what you think? So I've been following the whole Drake and Kendrick thing, and I think the way it's all unfolded to right now is beautiful for us. Because this uh, this joint that we're talking about that made D one and Le- uh, Lecrae respond, yeah, it's super balanced. It's, it's taking us to a place where it should be. So and I think it. um, you know, for hip hop, for hip hop specifically. People have always painted this picture that, oh, it's all negative, it's all negative. I think the reality is there's a lot of negativity in the world. That's true. But there's also positivity. There's also light. There's also, you know, like people that have uh, fruitful and, and nurturing perspectives on things. And specific to Lecrae and D1, as someone that's followed a career, you know, pretty early on, right? The first joint I heard from, from Lecrae was called Jesus Music. You have to go check that out. Fire. Riding around with my top down, listening to this Jesus music. So, you know, he's kind of been about his faith for a long time, and he's been on his own journey. Then you got D1. Y'all have to go check out Weezy J50. That's the name of the song, if oh, y'all yeah. don't know. I heard that before. And that'll take, you, that'll take you all the way back and, and just show you where his head and heart has been. So I think for the people that are at arms about 
yo, why is D, you know, why is D getting mentioned? Why is Lecrae getting mentioned? If y'all look at their history and their resume and their pedigree, then you'll see why Kendrick would reference these two brothers. And I think the perspective that these two brothers showed on their response, I, like they're not a response, but like you said, passing the baton. Yeah. I think it, it, it's, it's a full circle moment. I'm so happy for both of them, proud of both of them, watching their trajectory. And uh, y'all better go pick up that Tell the Truth or Die Lion. Y'all okay. need to pick that up. Thank you, brother. Get on us to die line. Oh, Thank you, sir. Your book. Yeah, that's but the my sad book. thing about it was a remix. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. See, the sad thing about it is we'll play these records and then next week they'll be gone. Well, no, they'll they, right no, 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 no. They, they, they will, they'll be gone on radio, but right. they'll still exist online. Right. And that's why radio needs to catch up. If people are still listening to it, like, because sometimes people will say, I love this, I like this, they'll listen to it one time, then they'll go back to. They'll listen to it if we play it. In the club. They'll go back to, you know, whatever it is in the club. They'll listen to it if we play it. That's why we call it radio programming. We can program y'all to like anything. People don't even listen to radio like that anymore. You though. see your line. Damn, the Illuminati will be revealed. They don't. That's People not don't, true. No one sits and listens. I don't know. I don't 90 have friends that. Nine, over 90% of America still listens to radio every morning, Lauren. Everybody I know, they, they get their stuff offline. They watch it from well, YouTube. Well, 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 they I'll stream they consume, from their phones. But that's, they do that with radio. I heart radio app. They yeah, stream on their but I'm saying no one's like in the car. When you say oh, listen okay, to radio, you, I'm thinking you, you're yes. in the car driving. Most people are on their apps and... They consume like, it differently. Yeah, they're at work, yes. they're at the yeah. gym, they're on the yes. bus, they're on the train. There's different ways of consuming music radio now. You've been working here all of this time. People telling you that you ain't got you, you don't shave under your underarms. People telling you that you single. Oh you hear God. people calling here every well, day. Nobody you listens. Listens. Nobody listens. One thing y'all not gonna do today this is, is keep, crazy. keep mixing up my words. Y'all crazy. know what I meant. Go, go Physically to sitting this, 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 at a radio this, 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 is not. All right, let's go to commercials. We have just with the mess with Lon Larosa coming up, so don't go uh, anywhere. Y'all are the mess. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Everybody, we are the Breakfast Club. Let's get to Jess with the mess with Lauren LaRosa. The news is real, weather is real. Lauren's just a Robin Moore. Just don't do no lies. Don't do no lies. She don't spare nobody. Worldwide Jess, worldwide mess. On the Breakfast Club. She's the coach of shoes. With Lauren, Lauren LaRosa. I'm back. And I got the mess. Talk, talk to me. Uh, going back to Diddy really quickly, it is 8.52 a.m. Um, September Eastern time. Eastern Standard Time, mm-hmm. September 17th. And as of now, nothing has been unsealed um, in the indictment, the federal indictment that Diddy was taken into custody, uh, arrested for uh, last night. And we believe he's still locked up, right? We, we, don't, we don't think he's released yet? No, there's no word that he's been released. So that, to my knowledge, he is still in custody. Um, I wanted to update. I know earlier I had mentioned that there were reports that he was arrested in a hotel lobby. That has been um, confirmed to a source that confirmed it was the Park Hyatt Hotel in New York. Mm-hmm. He was taken in by Homeland Security. Um, Homeland Security's Investigations Department, HSI, which is the department that ran into his home along with a couple other agencies. And just to clarify what they who they are, um, they lead the investigative arm of the Department of Homeland Security and they're responsible for investigating transnational crime and threats, um, including human trafficking, terrorism, drug smuggling, and other organized criminal activity. Mm. Um, I'd also been trying to clarify a bit why all of this is going going down in New York and uh, way before just him being taken custody. Uh, the grand jury convening, just everything is based here when it seems like things are widespread Yeah, with I them. wondered, yeah, because they raided his house in LA and Florida, so I was wondering why New York. I received pushback from the U.S. Attorney's Office only because they're saying this is not unsealed yet, so mm-hmm. they can't talk to me any additional, um, any, any time additionally on it until that. Okay. And then I'd also mentioned earlier that Diddy was out and about this past week. Uh, last night was out with his son and friends and then um, he was also at Melba's during the day, which is a restaurant in Harlem and I spoke to some people that were in the restaurant uh, when he was there and I was told that he was there a little bit after 2 o'clock uh, he called ahead before he came um, he was very warm and very casual he was taking photos and stuff with people but he was a, a bit reserved so um, you know I, I don't know how much he knew was going to happen in those next couple hours that next day but yeah mm-hmm. all I know is they talking about putting that racketeering on him like I told y'all earlier if you ever had an orgy with Diddy it's a poss- possibility you might be going to jail if you ever been over one of them houses drunk off Ciroc butt naked. It's yeah. possible. Yeah, that's what people were saying that you know they they're gonna release really start releasing what's in those videos and who yeah. else whoa. is gonna be picked up. What? Why was that a whoa? Whoa, because that's gonna be a like how long <laughs> did he be, you know how long did he been in the industry? Yeah, they probably got VHS on, tapes. Man. They that's got VHS tapes for Jesus. sure. For sure, that's gonna be getting a, a peek behind the curtain of of, of the Illuminati. 
Well, we are going to keep you guys posted as as things are happening, <laughs> uh, whether it's here on the Breakfast Club mm-hmm. or on Bronco Grinding. So make sure you stay locked in with us. Do we know what um, time that press conference is going to happen? Were they going to unseal it? What neck of the clock? I don't know anything. I, do, I don't know anything about if they haven't even said uh, officially there will be a press conference. They just said things mm-hmm. will be unfiled. So I, uh, unsealed. So I'll keep you guys posted on all of that stuff for sure. And are um, they going to give Diddy a bell? Do we know that too? They have to give Diddy a bell. Why are you right? asking her questions? Do not don't know. Because she's diving in. She dove in. He does not have to receive. He has to. He, he has to be given legally the right to ask for one, yeah. but a judge can deny it. Mm, okay. and, and I think that if, if that is denied, it's gonna, that's going to be very telling as well, too. Um, but okay. moving on, though, we'll, we'll get back to that when we know more. Good job, Lauren. You, you really Lauren investigated. Lauren's really good at what she does. She's that's a right. journalist. Thank you. That's brown girl, brown. Thank you. Brown girl don't shave, but brown girl grind. What'd you say? He said you don't shave. I, say, no, I did not say that. He said you didn't shave. No, I didn't. Oh, I heard him. Oh, okay, I didn't, you said what he said. So yeah, because brown girl, I'm going to punch you in your face. stories. Okay, <laughs> so moving on. Um, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart sat down with some guy we know in the room. Leonard. Um, yes, yeah, so he sat down with Charlemagne for um, Charlemagne's, what is it called? Out of Context. Out of Context. Yes. For Out of Context, sorry. Um, and you guys d- got into the Cat Williams conversation. Let's mm-hmm. take a listen. I think there's probably one moment where I've actually talked about Cat publicly, and this was when... I think it was on Breakfast Club. We were, we were promoting night school, and... Tiffany was affected by some of the things he said. And I'm, it was more of a like support for her in that moment and like uh, some shots at him. Do you regret that? Yeah, I shouldn't even talk. I should never address him at all. I don't have to. What, like, why? Now, if you guys are not familiar with the comments that he made while he was here with Tiffany Haddish, let's take a listen to those comments. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your actions? You had the shot. Cat was in that position at one point. You were the guy. You were set up to be the star. You didn't show up to work. And, and you know, people think that Kev was, Kev shot first. Kev was replying to Cat when Cat was on Frank Ski and Wanda show. Right. Yeah. But they only remember Cat going to Wanda. Wanda. Yeah. Yes. That's yep. True. Well, yeah. I mean that that clip picked up everywhere, so maybe that like clarifies stuff for a little bit for people. I just like in this interview, Kevin Hart. He's he's so elevated beyond all the noise, and I oh, I, yeah. I love to see yeah. that from him because he gets a lot of noise his way because he is the star right now or ha- has been for a while. Yes. Yeah, not going anywhere. Um, but Charla, mm-hmm. all the ill stuff because we mm-hmm. on you right now. What's all mm-hmm. the what's all this ill stuff? Well, you know, another thing me and Kevin Hart talked about in the industry, I mean, in that interview was, um, you know, the the, 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 the the rhetoric that he's a plant. Mm-hmm. Like there's like an, a industry secret plant. society that can just press buttons to make things happen. Mm-hmm. I have five words that uh, should pique your interest, and that is the Illuminati will be revealed. That's what the back of my shirt says. Do they got an email sign up? Hold on. Turn around. See, what, the Illuminati will be revealed. Let me, let me come see a little closer. Let the Illuminati. You want to get closer? Wait, oh, no, 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 God. no. You, Charla, oh, uh-uh, don't sit down there. Don't, don't, don't run from it. Don't run from it. Don't run from it. Don't run from it. It says the Illuminati will be revealed. If you want to know what's going on behind the curtain of various industries out there, I think I got something for you. Like if you want to know about the wealth and the power, who's behind granting people this fame in these industries, then I'm, I, I think I got something for you. I want to salute the AWA Studios. Uh, they're a comic book company. Uh, I partnered with them to create a new comic book, a graphic novel. And the graphic novel will tell you everything you want to know about the Black Illuminati. Mm. If you're a comic book head, then you know you might know some of these names. My man Brian Edward Hill, uh, legendary artist Dinya Cohen, comic book icon Bill Sinkovich, and uh, my South Carolina brethren Sanford Green. He did the cover art. Uh, the Illuminati may or may not be based on a true story, but go to Kickstarter.com and search Ill. Illuminati, I L L U M I N A T I, are my name, Charlemagne, and order your copy. Turn around, let me see the. the what is not, it again? Not, he want to see behind your curtain. That's exactly how it starts. He want to see I, behind hey, your curtain. Exactly, that's exactly how it starts. They tell you to turn around. They want to see something. <laughs> next thing you know. <laughs> next thing. You, <laughs> I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. Next thing you know. Next thing you know. Next thing right. you know. You and the Freak Illuminati. Envy. And oh, somebody nice. from the Illuminati mm-hmm. and you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, Go to Kickstarter. Started.com and search Ill Illuminati I L L U M I N A T I are my name Charlemagne and uh go order your copy. All the people listening to the radio will go do that because I saw the numbers you sent me and I apologize. Just letting y'all know, eight million monthly listeners, baby. I, the people Thank do you. listen Thank to you the God. radio. I apologize. Thank you, I'm God. Sorry. I just want to read. I couldn't read it. You turned around too slow. 
Look back Boy. at it. Look back at it. You, them, you, them indictments, them indictments <laughs> gonna be unsealed in a little bit. Right. Charla, New York City is on alert. You it's on the, over, over the shoulder. shoulder. Look, one time. For what? Cause you know, you don't be acting like it. Look, mm -hmm. the Illuminati. <laughs> he look back at it for real. I hate this place. All right, that is just with the mess with Lauren Larosa. Both arms. Now, when we come back, we got the People's Choice mix. Get your request, and it's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. The Breakfast Club. Your mornings will never be the same. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Salari, Charlemagne the God. We are the Breakfast Club. Lauren LaRosa filling in for Jess. We got a salute Eve for joining us this morning. Evie Eve, her new book, Who's That Girl, is available everywhere you buy books now. Eve is really a one on one. I was not mm -hmm. joking when I was sitting there thinking to myself, there's not even a female rapper that's out right now that I can even compare to Eve. Because for whatever reason, Eve, like, she had such a stellar career, but it's kind. Of, I don't. I don't want to say under the radar, but kind it is. of under the radar. It is. She don't get the like the what you like the flowers, I guess. Or and flowers yeah. is kind of a little weird because too. she gets busy. You forget about the sitcoms. She has a the lot. music, the sitcom, yeah. the movies. You forget so about I feel the like it, it depends on where you located. Because I think Delaware, Philly, we like she's like walking icon to us, but it's not like that everywhere though. Yeah. It should be, mm. and she evolved so. Gracefully, mm -hmm. so gracefully. You know what I'm saying? A, a Married, looks kids. Amazing. That's right. Look, looks great. Looks healthy. Like I don't know. Yep. She just, I, I, I respect Eve a lot. Her book is really, really good. By the way. Yep. Salute to Eve. You got a positive note? I do, and I also want to remind people. My Mental Wealth Expo is happening October 12th, my fourth annual Mental Wealth Expo at the Marriott Marquis Times Square here in New York City. Uh, we have you know, some of the best psychiatrists and therapists and spiritual leaders that are going to be there. Um, go to mentalwealthexpo.com for more details. Remember, it's a free event for all ages, okay, from 11 a.m. 11 to 4 p.m. You know, if you've been there the last few years because this is our fourth year you know come be one of those four thousand five thousand people that um just gets a, a, a great day of mental health education and healing so go to mentalwealthexpo.com for more details free event open to all ages now the positive note is simply this excellence is not a skill it is an attitude did you hear what i just said excellence is not a skill it is an attitude Positive thinking, okay, having a positive attitude will let you do everything better than negative thinking and having a negative attitude will. Have a blessed day. Breakfast Club, bitches! Y'all finished or y'all done?